Live from New York, it's Warp Electronics with Becky Stern. That's me. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's just, what Be is it close. Today? You're like, it's not me, and you pulled off your mask. <laughs> There's another Becky Stern inside of a Becky Stern. Just keep peeling until yeah. we get to the bottom layer. It's July 9th. Yeah. Steamy day in New York City, and we're going to talk about wearable electronics, just like we do every week. With That's right. me is Phil, Mr. Lady Ada himself. Yes. He's going to tell us what's on today's show. Camera operator to the maker stars. <laughs> <laughs> on today's show. Our lighting's a little bit different today. You can see the um, uh, the LEDs more. That's on today's show. <laughs> I know. Our, our what you call it lights are a little whatever. No, we could turn them on. We could turn but, them but, up you know, higher. The, the LEDs look nicer. Yeah, it's fine. I like checked it out. I, if I don't look like an albino, we're all good. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> yeah. All right. On today's show, the code is Maker Camp. Maker Camp. Ten percent off in the floor and wearables category expired tonight, eleven fifty nine p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Get on it. We'll tell you why it's Maker Camp soon. But or only only until you've lost your chance to to watch. they're broadcasting at the same time as us. So it's a broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> we won't tell you about Maker Camp until it's clear that you're in this broadcast with us. We're crossing the streams. Yeah, Warble Warble Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to share some customer projects and debut a new project you can build yourself. That's right. Material spotlight. The goggles. They do nothing. Yeah. They do something actually. In this in this case. All right. Tools we really, 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 really like. Today it's an it's a nerdy tool. All right, those are the best tools. Yeah. Questions and answer. You had a bunch of questions. Becky has a bunch of answers. You guys have been asking way more questions than than before, so I'm going to answer more questions today than normal. If you yeah. have any questions for next week's show or a previous pre another future show, you can leave them yeah. in the comments on YouTube or Twitter or Google Plus or Carrier Raven or however you want to get the questions to us and. Yeah. I will answer them on a future episode of the show, making you eligible for the show's giveaway. All that and more on Web Electronics Becky Stern. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, we got a, a billion e questions. We have a billion e questions I, to get to at the end. We're going to have a very long question segment. Yeah, I will make an observation. There's more questions about wearable electronics than engineering questions for Lady Ada. So she's weeks. answered so many engineering questions. A lot yeah, of those. Yeah, we've had a four ones. year head start. But right. But I think I think the reason is because the people that are doing engineering, um, the questions are hard to ask over a voice format. You need like to be in the forums and post photos and like yeah. you know, they have to look at a schematic. Where mm -hmm. wearable electronics, it's actually more visual. Yeah, it is pretty it's visual. It's more about planning your project because all the stuff that we have works together really well. So mm -hmm. it's like, what type of battery? Can I wash it? Yeah. Questions like technique questions. Yeah. How best to implement your yeah. idea, and that's what I'm here for. And is it washable amongst the, you know? The answer is yes. <laughs> yeah. And is it yes. washable? <laughs> yes. How many neopixels? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is it washable, and how many neopixels can I attach to it? Uh, I think we've got those two covered. That's cool. <laughs> that's that's exactly that's most of the questions. <laughs> but there's so many good questions today, so um, I hope you aren't disappointed that your chances of winning a prize are a little bit lower because yeah. there's many more questions. But I'm going to answer so many more of your questions. Yeah. Okay. Let's dive right in. Um, the code is Maker Camp. Um, why is the code uh, Maker Camp? Maker today? Camp. Maker Camp is a thing that um, it's a video hangout show that Make Magazine does with Google. Uh, they've yeah. been doing it for two summers so far, or just one summer last yeah, summer. Yeah, uh, Lamore was on it. Two I summers, right? It. Last you, summer and the yeah. summer before. Yeah, it's and um, it's really cool. It's a free Google Plus hangout like summer camp thing where they publish like a project in the morning and then they do a project in the afternoon on video and Fridays they take you on field trips. And I'm going to be on an episode of Maker Camp next Monday, the 14th, for their um, Art and Design Week. And they're also doing, the blog is doing a wearables week. So I'm going to be on Maker Camp next Monday doing a, a project you can build along with me. We're making um, we're making LED shoe clips. So like roughly okay. um, roughly fashion accessories for your shoes and um, with just LEDs and coin cell batteries. So um, okay. that'll be fun if you want to tune in next Monday. And Maker Camp is it's running for like how many weeks is it? It's several weeks long yeah. and every single every day Monday through Friday there's a there's a hangout at 11 Pacific and um, Buzz Aldrin was on it already. That's cool. Yeah, so like it's pretty fun, yeah. free thing. If you're a kid or you're, you're a parent and you mm -hmm. and um, you want your kids to have something to do this summer, Maker Camp's pretty fun, free thing you can do in front of your computer um, to get ideas for stuff you can do outside together. Yeah. So uh, that's why the code is Maker Camp. That'll get you ten percent off everything in the floor and wearables category today. It all makes sense now. It all makes sense now, and you can join me. Uh, I would please show up and watch and ask questions during, there's like a live Q&A thing. And also Erica Domasek from PSA Made This is going to be on the okay. episode with wow. me. A star-studded star -studded. event. <laughs> yeah. In fact, actually, you know, it's funny right now. If you go to adafruit.com 
and cycle through the images, there's Space Becky. Space Becky. <laughs> yeah, Space Becky's on there today. Space so. Becky is in today's show also. Oh, really? Yeah, there's a little bit of Space Becky later okay. in one of the questions. It was meant to be then. Yeah, I put that in the, the rotation on the homepage. I know, it's a great <laughs> image. I mean, why You're not? My hair out. looks really fabulous yeah. in that photo, so I, I have to encourage. There's going to be lots of, yeah, there's lots of hero Becky image on the website. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Wearable Wednesday. Um, okay, there's some cool customer projects. I had so many I had to take notes. Yeah. Um, so every week on the Adafruit blog, uh, me and Leslie and Jessica and lots of other bloggers write about cool wearable projects that are happening out there in Maker World. Um, and this one's by uh, Garrett Mace. I met Garrett at Maker Fair a couple yeah, years Garrett. ago. Yeah, and he's made these really cool uh, NeoPixel shades. So it's like a PCB, flat like shutter shade PCB on the front with all these NeoPixels on it. He likes to call them WS8. But you know, we still like you, Garrett. And um, <laughs> he has these really cool um, LED shades. They kind of build on previous, he's done lots and lots of um, flexible LED display uh, garment ish like things at Maker Faire. So it's nice to see him continue along uh, into the eyewear realm. Cool project, Garrett. Okay, and next up, this is one of my favorite ones because this is a project that we see quite often. Yeah, so yeah. Daniel Rains sent in this picture of his 12-year-old son's uh, Iron Man arc reactor that he made using the Adafruit tutorial, the super superhero power plant, as we like to call it, um, which yeah. is a NeoPixel ring, and uh, although that looks like a bigger ring, it's like they made changes to it, and it looks or like it's it a very small kid. Or it's a small kid, but no, it looks like it has four NeoPixels in the middle, and ours only had one. Anyway, yeah. um, he made his own version of the Iron Man arc reactor that is um, like layers of laser cut plastic and uh, copper wire to look like the coils. Very popular Halloween project. Um, if you're looking for, you know, get started on your Iron Man costume now and we've got your reactor covered. Yeah. If you're building out of cardboard or whatever, plastic. Um, but we love to see young makers uh, build cool stuff. Look at that smile on his face. He's so self-satisfied. That really makes me happy. So. Yeah, a million years ago I wrote an article on Make about what is like the maker superhero and I had everyone uh, give their input. There's a, a really cool independent comic character. Her name is The Engineer. And then um, there's, of course, Bruce Wayne. And then there was uh, Tony Stark. And Tony Stark is the one that people said, you know, he's just a regular guy and he uses his, his smarts yeah. uh, to get out of a, a jam. But I think he causes as many problems as he solves. He's his own worst <laughs> yeah. enemy, right? I think Batman's kind of like that, too. Yeah. Okay. All right. Anyway, cool, cool project, Daniel's oh, look at this. kid. Um, this is a uh, bracelet by um, a friend of Leslie's at the at the hackerspace in Philadelphia. Um, his name's Michael, and he made this dazzle bracelet. And it's 3D printed, and it has a Gemma and NeoPixel strip and the uh, Adafruit microphone amplifier breakout. And there's a cool video on the site right now if you go check it out on the Adafruit blog. Um, yeah. Of it lights up in reaction to music, so mm -hmm. really fun. It's like a bangle bracelet, and the 3D printing diffuses yeah. the um, LED strip, so you get like this cool color changing, very obviously audio reactive uh, yeah. behavior. That More really fun 3D for parties. printing plus uh, wearable electronics. The two were meant to be together. Yeah. Um, I was walking uh, to our apartment uh, yesterday, Lady and I, and I, Lady Ada and I, and I said, you know, I should really email Brooke from Printerbot or um, the folks at uh, Lulzbot, or even uh, MakerBot or whoever bot, um, and say, hey, you know, uh, you guys should have a, an Adafruit electronics pack that goes with your 3D printer. Yeah. That's a really good idea. I mean, we um, do it for, yeah. the, for the MakerBot. We had, with our Adafruit edition, which is, we don't know if we're going to do another one yeah. um, yet, but uh, if they're watching, you know, free idea. But it would be kind of neat, because we see this all the time. You'd, it'd be a pack of things that you get as electronics, and then you'd print out all the enclosures as needed. Right, and I find that um, when people first get a MakerBot and they don't know what to make, like it helps to have a project in mind that you're shooting for, and then it, it makes it easier to learn 3D modeling software if you have a goal. Yeah. And you're not just playing around. You have like, oh, I want a challenge that you're trying to solve. I want to make this bracelet that holds these electronics, so yeah. I have some design constraints and yeah. a place to get started. If you blow 2K on a printer, you should really print something out and wear it. <laughs> like, that you got to. I earned my MakerBot Blue Smoke Monster badge. Oh, okay, congratulations. Um, <laughs> I didn't actually Blue Smoke Monster my MakerBot, which is actually Phil's MakerBot. <laughs> yeah, but um, but it did break a couple parts on it, so yeah. cool. 
Yeah, like we, I made it so that I have to order stuff on the internet before I can use it again. Yeah, we <laughs> we had that happen when we first got on. <laughs> We're, you know what? There's still plenty of opportunities for someone to come along and make the perfect 3D printer because we're still uh, ways away. <laughs> it's no. hard, this is hard, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to do. Noah keeps telling me I should switch to a printer bot. I told him, but I have this maker bot on my shelf yeah. right now and I like it so much. I'm trying. Next up. There's another cool customer project. This is, I took notes today because there are a couple of them, um, by Instructables user Maze Taylor. I made this necklace with uh, RGB sewable NeoPixels, and then uh, this is actually some decorative bathroom tile. So uh, I'm not going to presume gender, but um, the cool. creator uh, found that this bathroom tile looked cool when it was backlit by pixels, made a weird um, uh, like cardboard substrate on the back with the yeah. pixels on it and conductive thread, and then stuck these tiles on the front to make a cool, probably very heavy, but very nice looking uh, statement necklace. Yeah, looks like every alien necklace from Star Trek Next Generation. <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. And it's got a Gemma in there. Um, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's like Diana Troy's dad has one of these or something. Okay, next up. <laughs> <laughs> Maker Camp, uh, we speaking already of talk, Maker We already Camp. talked about Maker Camp, but here's the slide. Okay. It is here in the show. Yeah. Um, all right, so it goes all the way to August 15th. So this is like a month. Yeah, okay, there month. you go. Free yeah. summer camp from Google and Make for building, tink tinkering, and exploring. Um, and then I guess this year they're doing some uh, activities at local maker spaces too, and there's and like a map trips. of where you can trips. find like a local, like a library or some place that's participating in a maker yeah. physical activity, but then also, yeah, field trips, virtual yeah. field trips on Fridays. So there's some free learning happening over there, and it seems like it's tons of fun. Okay. I will, I will be there on Monday. Hope. Somewhere else I will also be is Hope, Hackers on Planet Earth. Uh, the number 10. Yeah. Not this weekend, next weekend. It's not this weekend, it's next weekend. Okay. The July 18th through 20th. My talk on disruptive wearable technology is on Saturday the 19th at, uh, at 3. It's like right after the keynote. So. Okay, that'll be exciting. Cool. All right. Yeah. Where else are going to be? Fun conference. Oh, I don't know that I'm, I'm, I might make an appearance at one of these things. We'll not going to be at this one. No, I, it, these are this weekend. So there's there's two events happening this weekend in New York City. Two NeoPixel programming workshops uh, for um, coders and non-coders happening at New York City Resistor, the hackerspace in downtown Brooklyn. So if you ha are want to get into NeoPixels but you're not a coder, go to the non-coder one, which is I think. Saturday, and then if you are already an experienced coder but you want to learn about LED animations, gamma correction, uh, LED mat scrolling, scrolling matrix displays out of NeoPixels, you can go to the Programming NeoPixels for Experienced Coders workshop on Sunday. Um, those are all by the, f the fine NYC Resistor folks who I highly recommend, and I'm going to I'm going to try to stop by mm -hmm. one of those things. We'll see all what right. happens this weekend. And uh, here's some big news that's coming up ahead. Yeah. Uh, Adafruit is almost at 10 million YouTube views. We're at like 9, 7 right now. Yeah. So uh, what we want to, to mm -hmm. tell you about is that if you are a subscriber to our YouTube channel, which is really easy and free, you just click the subscribe button. Um, when we hit 10 million views, we're going to announce a special code. Just for Dis subscribers. Discount code to the Adafruit store just for subscribers. So if you're not subscribed. Well, assuming that works out. <laughs> we have to figure it out. We, we have to figure out how to tell just the subscribers. We think, we, we, think we have an idea. We. It might leak a little, but it's okay. we, mainly for, sub sub yeah, for subscribers, we want to do something nice for you guys. Yeah. And all that subscribing does, if you are not a native YouTube user already, um, is that it uh, it's like subscribing to an RSS feed. And um, every time you log into YouTube and you go to your subscriptions, you can see all of the new videos by all of the YouTube yeah. creators that you love. And so it's the way to keep up to date on every video that Adafruit makes and um, yeah. to see announcements when we schedule the live shows and to... to um, see videos as soon as we publish them, which is often before we've even blogged them. Yeah, also behind the scenes stuff. So we post things from yeah. around the Adafruit factory. So we were running another mill on July 4th mm -hmm. and had Lady Ada using it. And it's just you know stuff that we post kind of behind the scenes at yeah. Adafruit. So, so kind of like little vlog videos. There's also yeah. episodes of Circuit Playground. Yeah, lots for, of stuff. For teaching your kids electronics, there's this show, there's our 3D Thursdays. There's all kinds of great stuff on the YouTube channel. So if you're not subscribed, just go over to YouTube and hit the button. It's really easy. And then when we hit 10 million views, which might be in a couple days, it, we were at like 9.5 on Monday yeah. and now we're at 9.7, um, we'll announce a special code for subscribers. Yeah. Yeah, when you give away free content on the web, um, there's uh, a lot of ways to know if it's working out. Um, if 
10 million views happen, that means you guys like it, and we'll, we'll keep making more. Yeah. So watch all the videos like three or four times. Yeah. <laughs> and um, comment and like and share. All right, so we got some Okay, that, that concludes um, those announcements. Here's a shop, a sh a shop announcement. Um, remember we had the, was it a material spotlight on this new silicone coated wire? Yeah. Um, we got a bunch more colors in, and I actually am missing the orange one. So we, know not, we, oh, okay. we launched with uh, red, black, and white. And now we have also blue, gray, yellow, green, and orange. So um, this is really good stuff for wearables is the sheathing is super flexible and also very heat resistant. You can put a lot of current through these wires um, without the casing melting or getting hot. And um, it's very flexible and has stranded wire inside. So uh, for those of you who are now building Burning Man costumes, this is the stuff you want um, if you're building interactive dance costumes. and. Um, you need to use wire instead of conductive thread. This is the wire we recommend. So now it's in okay. a bunch of different colors to match all of your fabric substrates. OK. And uh, this is this week's video. This week's video is about bootloading. All right. Want to just go to it? Yeah. Do it. I, do I explain it. it in the video. OK. On each <laughs> Arduino-compatible microcontroller runs a tiny program called the bootloader. The bootloader is a helper that reads your Arduino sketch over USB and burns it to the little microcontroller brain. A new blank chip from the factory doesn't come with a bootloader on it. It's something that has to be programmed before you use it as an Arduino for the first time. Bootloaded. Bam. To program the chip with the bootloader requires a special programmer like the USB Tiny ISP, which is an Adafruit kit you can put together. Connecting to a standard Arduino is easy, but what about Flora and Gemma? Today we'll go over the connections you'll need to flash the bootloader on Adafruit's sewable microcontrollers. Flora and Gemma both come with a bootloader when you get them in the mail, but there are a few reasons you might want to burn your own, besides just the nerd cred. Maybe you're an AVR hacker and you want to change the bootloader's function. Or maybe you're building your own circuit and you need to flash a new blank chip. And then there's the rare case that maybe your bootloader got corrupted and flashing it again can bring your circuit back to life. To burn Flora's bootloader, insert a 6-pin header into the socket on the USB Tiny. Then plug the headers into Flora's ICSP pads next to the AVR chip. Wedge the pins against the pads to make contact, since we don't want to solder stabby header pins to the flat, wearable Flora. Make sure Flora is powered via USB or a battery, double check your USB Tiny's jumper is in place, and use the Arduino software to send the bootloader to Flora. Connecting to Gemma is a bit more tricky since there's no space for the ICSP connector. Instead, you can build a cable squid connecting a standard socket to some alligator clips. Power Gemma over USB or a battery. Double check your USB Tiny's jumper is not in place. Hold the reset pin connection carefully and send over the bootloader commands. Sweet! The circuit diagram and complete tutorial for these techniques is up on the Adafruit Learning System if you'd like to follow along. Thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more wearable electronics from Adafruit. Okie dokie, super handy. Super handy. If, if you... you're an AVR hacker, raise your hand. Yeah. Well, I, I, I live <laughs> with one. That kind of counts. Uh, yeah. I know way too much about AVR just because of all the interesting things that you overhear. I've been talking about it in my sleep for the past week <laughs> working on this project. Anyway, this is a thing that's been in my to-do bin for a long time. When we, when we first released Gemma, Lady Ada was like, Becky, you should make this this cable squid so you can reflash the yeah. bootloader. Um, and um, it's useful not only because um, we have we have had people and post in the forums, and, and I've accidentally uh, corrupted my bootloader too. It can Happens. happen if you have a weird short, like a wire or a piece of thread scrapes across your yeah. circuit. So. Um, and if you wanted to like make your own gem or your own flora, um, this is a cool technique you'd have to use. So, okay. but don't pay full price. Get ten percent off. Yeah. Use the code MakerCamp. Oh, show. Tonight. All right, material spotlight. We got uh, goggles. The goggles. They yeah. do everything. <laughs> All right. Uh, these costume goggles we got in order to make uh, NeoPixel ring goggles, um, and right. we tried a bunch of different pairs of goggles. And Phil B made this tutorial for the fabulous kaleidoscope eyes. Uh, project yeah. powered by Trinket or Gemma, and so you should get the goggles, get the NeoPixel rings, and build yourself a pair of goggles, uh, especially if you're going to the Burning Man. I don't want to stereotype you guys, but y'all love the goggles. Yeah, or any Comic-Con or yeah. um, to the grocery store is where I tend to wear them. So it's, I'm not kidding. <laughs> All right, um, tools we love. Uh, this kind of goes along with 
tutorial this week. Yeah, we ch I try. I try to keep it thematic. This, it's as if this was planned. It, it's as if that I thought about it the show before yeah. the show happened. This week's um, tool we love is the USB Tiny ISP. And I know I talk about it a little bit in the video, but I wanted to talk more about this product because it's a really early Adafruit product. It's a kit you put together. We sell the, the um, it comes with the injection molded enclosure and all of the circuit boards and the parts you need to put on the circuit board. It's just a really cool low cost AVR programmer that works with AVR Studio and Windows or Mac. I'm reading notes here, um, <laughs> and um, it can it can work with um, with all of your minimalistic Arduinos, and and as you can see with Flora and Gemma too, it's also what you need to reprogram your spoke pod if you have yeah. bicycle lights. Product ID forty six. I really personally low. I personally ship probably ten thousand of these. Yeah, at so least. <laughs> it's a really cool tool to have in your toolbox um, if you want to like um, say you're running a workshop where you're all building your own Arduinos um, and you have yeah. you ordered PCBs. And you, and you ordered uh, at Mega Chips, you can uh, pop them out of an existing Arduino and use this to flash the bootloader onto them yeah. um, before you put them in a parts kit for making your own Arduino board. So, um, and here I am using it to program Flora just by holding the, the port because I didn't want to solder the yeah. pins out of my Flora. So that's a really cool tool that I love and I've had one for years and years um, yeah. ever since I started programming Arduino stuff. Um, okay. Because we start, when I learned Arduino in college, we made our own. Yeah. And we had to. That's we had cool one of these. Arena. I was, of course, the one who bought this thing, and then everybody else used it. All right, Maker Camp. If you want to get ten percent off your USB Tiny ISP, you can use code Maker Camp. Okay. Questions and answers today. The prize is a Flora. We're gonna give away a Flora, and we've got a bunch of questions. A bunch of questions, and I prepared extra hard for these questions. All right, here we go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, I know. All right, this is from Food Frenzy Gaming. I might make a Daft Punk helmet, and I wanted to know the best way to put a DIY voice changer in it and EL panel with a sound activated inverter and a LED matrix. Thanks. Well, Food Frenzy Gaming guy, it sounds like you have a pretty good plan already. Yeah. I like how he's like, I might make the Daft Punk helmet. Oh, you are. It's already, this is already, <laughs> this is all you're going to do for the next few months. Um, there's a couple tutorials, you can go to the next slide, yeah. um, where uh, there's a couple tutorials that'll get you started. So Phil B's voice ch wave shield voice changer circuit is the easiest way I know of to make a DIY voice changer. It uses the wave shield and a standard Arduino and yeah. our um, microphone amplifier breakout. Um, and then, uh, and there's a full tutorial there for his voice changing and demon costume. There's another Phil B tutorial about animating multiple LED backpacks, and that'll get you those weird skull eyes or um, the eyes for his demon costume. Um, and you can, pr you might be able to combine those into one yeah. Arduino circuit. He has full documentation on his dragon costume yeah. though, which uses both these and yeah. the voice changer. So. I don't remember if he fit it all on one Arduino board or not, but um, either way, completely separate from that circuit will be your voice activated uh, EL panel. You can use our pocket inverter as shown. Here's your circuit right on the screen. It's the EL panel, the sound, pocket sound inverter, and a battery pack. Um, but you won't be able to control that with your Arduino. That So that microphone you'll have to put also close to uh, the output of your voice changer or whatever else, you, or your face. Okay. Um, in order to make it. But it sounds cool. Please share it with us when it's done. Ticks up. This is from Joshua Stewart. Is the Flora color sensor compatible with the Gemma platform? Considering purchasing a Gemma as opposed to Flora to save money, but I realize that Gemma lacks a SDA and a SCI pin on the Gemma. Thanks. Um, you shouldn't look at ordering Gemma versus Flora to save money. You should look at Gemma versus Flora for what project you're trying to do. And if you're yeah. confused about which one you should get, you should watch our Flora versus Gemma video. Flora yeah. versus Gemma this yeah. Sunday. It's not like that at all. It actually just describes what projects <laughs> are good for either one. And um, Gemma does have uh, an SDA and SDL pin. If you look at the uh, the pinouts on the Introducing Gemma guide, you can see they're just not labeled as such on the silk screen on the board. But um, yeah. Uh, so it does. It can control I squared C devices. We have a tutorial for it using the I squared C LED matrix backpack. But we haven't um, done any of the research on the libraries, like the color sensor library, uh, to try to make it work with Gemma. It's possible it could. So if you're a code hacksaw, you could try it. Um, but we don't have any projects right now where we oh, yeah. can show you how it um, how it would work perfectly. But so I. This whole buying Gemma to save money is not a, it's, it's about what project you're doing. And if you need yeah. to debug cereal, you, you, need, should get a flora. you should get a Flora. Yeah, more. And, and I often find that like I have one Flora and then if I want to like, I can sometimes then develop on the Flora and port over to a Gemma yeah. to embed in a project and then I've still got that Flora for testing. So 
I don't think you'll be sad about ordering a Flora anyway. They're really awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Clayton says, Hey, Adafruit, greetings from Malta. I'm 13 years old. I was wondering how I can make a brake light for my bike lights when I hold the brake and even some indicators and some speakers too. Ooh, it sounds cool. Okay, Clayton. so he's saying like when you when you go like that, yeah. it'll light up. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, and you can do that. I would recommend playing around with some of our copper tape. Okay. So, um, you can put copper tape on the different parts of your brake levers so that when something makes contact, um, it activates a switch. That's a really fun project to do. Just have an LED, a battery, and have the copper tape interrupting your circuit. Um, and then once you've got that working, then you can introduce like a microcontroller that's looking at a digital input, but it's not a bad place to start. Okay. If you want to make, you can go to the next slide, if you want to yeah. make uh, a speaker on your bike, we have a project with a 3D printed enclosure and it holds onto your iPhone. Um, from putting like rad speakers on your bike. So you could 3D print enclosures. You could also just like attach a Bluetooth speaker to your bike and yeah. have the phone in your pocket. You don't have to 3D print anything. Um, I would like to see your 13 year old Malta bike projects. Yeah, that's not great. <laughs> Next up. Okay, I'm planning to use wearable electronics in my final project at university. I'm doing a costume with textiles, but I'm wondering if there are any health and safety issues that would be likely that I'd want to layer uh, light or Gazana or laser cut fabrics over LEDs pixels to create more experimental effect. But I also don't want to set my models on fire. <laughs> what sort of restrictions are there to prevent overheating or fires? Is there something I should be worried about because I am? Her username is there's too much butter. Use less butter. <laughs> don't put butter on your models. Yeah. Um, here's a picture of uh, Bill that Bill Ward took of a, a Brooklyn ballerina. Um, wearing a costume that a bunch of resistor folks, including Bill, worked on, um, putting pixels, neopixels inside uh, dance tutus, and none of their models caught on fire, and none of their models were electrocuted, and none of their models were burned, and I don't even think any of the costumes were burned. Um, I have heard one instance of someone in the forums one time, um, like, sparking conductive thread and making a little poof of smoke. But yeah. I've never done it. I've, I've never personally burned myself or caught any of myself on fire. And I'm, because, yeah. I, because I'm an expert, I'm pretty careless about this stuff. I'm like, whatever, I'll just plug the, uh. Yeah, and experts then, are the kind of the worst. Right. You, like, get, you get overconfident and you're just like, whatever, whatever. When yeah. I'm just developing something and I'm just yeah. plugging stuff in, like I, I would theoretically make the worst mistakes and I've never yeah. ever burn anything. So here's the thing. Conductive thread, when it shorts, it can make a spark. That spark is not very likely to ignite your stuff. That said, um, if you're uh, new at this stuff, you might want to start small and start on a project you don't put on a model. Um, yeah. And uh, don't put lithium batteries in a place where they can't easily be removed from your person. So I have like a lithium battery in the drone's hat, right? But yeah. I, I have this, I, like I wouldn't uh, I, like that, what's how do I describe it? It's like this. It's like I'm wearing it. It's burning me. Ah! I want to be able to get it off of me really yeah, fast. Yeah, yeah. So like that's something I usually try to plan into our wearable things. You'll notice that I made that bracelet. It has a magnetic clasp, so you could just yank on it if you needed to. That yeah. said, I've also never had any of our lithium batteries overheat um, while using it, even because of a short. Because Gemma and Flora both have short, like battery short protection, and um, so basically, there's too much butter. You don't need to worry. You'll be fine. Yeah. Um, just pay, read the tutorials carefully for any safety warnings, um, and uh, yeah. And remember, if you're completely worried about it, go to a non-oxygen environment because therefore there's no fire. <laughs> it's the only. It's the only solution. Yeah. Just start small. Go to space. Ex experiment. See the space theme. Try to make the mistakes while you're holding the circuit, yeah. and then and then if it doesn't hurt you, it won't hurt your model. Okay, next up. With Gemma, how many, I'll just say NeoPixels, can you solder and power all the pins before using a LiPoly would be necessary versus a button cell holder? So Antonio H is asking how many is too many for the coin cell holder, yeah. and the answer is more than four. So here's yeah. Space Becky um, yeah. with four NeoPixels glued to her face. Oh, it's five. It's five NeoPixels and glued to her face. And not on fire. And um, <laughs> not on fire. No, not on fire. Um, so I would say four or five, and that's how many NeoPixels come with the Gemma starter pack, which comes with that coin okay. holder. But you don't need to then upgrade specifically to a LiPoly. You could go to any other battery pack, uh, anything with more um, capacity, more milliamp hours. And we have an excellent video about battery powering your wearables you might want to check out. But you could do um, anything with a longer capacity, like an alkaline pack yeah. or one of our larger LiPoly batteries. Okay, speed run, Becky. We got to get you out of oh here. Oh my gosh! Next up, wearable question. There's a Stellina in the garment I'm making. Will it interfere with conductive thread? I asked this woman, Amanda, what Stellina was. She said it was in uh, a, 
uh, enameled aluminum that makes stuff sparkly. Okay. And we determined um, that probably not, it probably won't interfere because it's got a covering on it, it's laminated. Uh, but if you were to wash it a bunch of times, what happens? Maybe the lamination would come off. So um, I don't know, double check with the multimeter, but it's probably okay. Okay. Learn a new word, Stelina. Stelina. Next up, hi Becky, happy fourth. Question of the week for next week. What do you recommend for <laughs> momentary switches for wearables? I've seen Sobel button boards, but Adafruit doesn't seem to go in that direction. Do you recommend the buttons with leads or the through hole hardware? Any products on the horizon? So these are. These are the buttons I like, the yeah. clicky, clicky tactile on off switches, which you can use for power because they're high amperage uh, capacity, but you can also just use them as actuators for digital inputs. Um, I find that those little button boards, the sewable ones, the buttons are too small and, and people are squishy. So people are squishy, so you're trying to press the button and it's and not, it and you go. can actually click it. Yeah. So, like, I find that for wearables, like, you want to do, you want to have actuators, it's usually a sensor. Like, yeah. if you want it to be when you wiggle your hand, you could use a vibration sensor. Um, and if you need a button, like for on and off, the, the motorcycle backpack over there has one of these uh, for on off. Yeah. Or for triggering actions with a very clear, tactile, clicky switch that you can pinch. Um, yeah. Otherwise, why aren't you just using a sensor to detect whatever? Okay. No, we're not going to make any button sewable button boards anytime soon. Okay, <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of questions. Let's give away. Right? Yeah, oh, was that it? was time. Sorry, we're going over. This is the first time you've asked. So many questions. So I put all yeah. your questions in. I should turn it on inside the um, inside the drone's hat. The magic hat gives away a flora. That's what I thought we would do today. <laughs> um, and uh, and I put all your. This is totally random. Put all the things. Yeah. All the things. Okay. And the winner is today. The winner of the flora is Andrew. What did he ask? He asked about the buttons. Oh, great. He so asked the question. So oh, okay. like, no button board for you, but you can have a flora. Congratulations. If you um, email support at adafruit.com to claim your prize, or I will also send you a message on YouTube. And okay. um, if you didn't win today, it's OK. I don't have the same rules as Lady Ada, where you can only win once, and you can only enter once. You can enter as many times as you want. And I actually yeah. don't care if you've won a prize before, because if you're continuing to ask excellent wearable electronics questions, you should continue to be eligible to win a prize. Yeah. I it's just a little Moore's house. I just live in it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> just saying. We got we get different rules yeah, about who can win a prize. And as long as you keep asking me great wearable electronics questions, you'll be eligible to win in the future. That sounds fair. OK. Um, if you want to just buy stuff and help support wearable electronics with Becky Stern and all of Adafruit, use MakerCam. 10% off in the floor and wearables section. Expires 11.59 PM tonight. But you know what does not expire 11.59 tonight is what? Maker Camp itself. No. Nope. Where you can see me next Monday and you get a double dose of live Becky Stern on the internet That's right. on Monday and then Wednesday. You'll turn the channel more Becky Stern. Becky Stern this way. Becky Stern that way. <laughs> so um, tonight 7.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Show and tell. So if you have a project you can show it That's off. That's right. Yep. And then ask an engineer um, at, at 8, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. The longest running live electronics show in the world. Longest running <laughs> and, and um, oh. funniest hair colored. <laughs> yeah. This is also the great. funniest. This is the it's funniest great. hair it's great. color. Oh, you mean Lamar's color. Yeah, Lamar's and okay. mine. This is also the funniest color live wearable electronic show. Anyway, yeah. we'll be back here, same bat time, same bat channel next week. That's right. All right. And Thank until you, then, I bye hope bye. you make something to wear. Bye. Bye bye.